here with Dave Rinker on day one of the NCAA East preliminaries in Jacksonville. You had a couple distance runners go at it today, uh, Carol Strock in the 1500 and then Kathleen Stewart in the 10,000. First, we'll talk about Carol's race. Uh, pretty smart race for her. She was able to qualify for Saturday's quarterfinal race. Uh, you know, just talk about what she did so well in that race to put her in a position to move on to uh, the next race. Well, we'd gone through three different scenarios, and luckily for her, the fast scenario was the one that they hit, and she followed, made the, the right move at the right time. Uh, in a 15 hard, it spreads out, so the strategy can play a little bit with it. She had her kept her head up, watch what was going on, moved when she needed to, uh, uh, to get to the point with 800 meters to go where she was right with the group that needed, she needed to be with. And Carol's just a tough racer. If uh, she's in the right position, she's going to race and she's going to finish. Uh, we talk about keeping a, a bull in the chamber, so to speak, keeping a gear that you can use at the very end of the race. Uh, and she had that gear, but she didn't need to use it. She was running hard, but she, I still think she had another gear left. She needed it. And then in the nightcap, uh, Kathleen Stewart completes her collegiate career with the 10,000, the grueling 25-lap race around the track. Uh, uh, just kind of a different race for her, uh, a slower race from the lead pack. Um, you know, just talk about how she raced, and, and, and did that kind of slow start kind of affect her race a little bit? Well, yeah, it was. you put 48 people on the track at one time on a track that's probably made for maybe 20. And uh, and it didn't go. The leaders didn't go out fast. And Kathleen, you know, she went in ranked. She went ranked in the top 25. So for her to have gone to the lead and, lit and pushed at pace would have been uh, suicide for her. So she did the right thing by backing off of the leaders a little bit. But the problem was it was so slow that it was just jumbled, and she never really could get into a folk uh, into a uh, into a flow. She could never get into a rhythm. And she's very much a rhythm runner, and she got a lot of pushing. She had to stop a couple of times practically. So, you know, it, everybody was in the same boat, but with Kathleen, she just never quite got into it. Then she caught a cramp. Uh, she had a cramp for the last four miles, but yet she, she did a great job of racing with the group she was with. Uh, I know we both went in thinking she was ready to run a little bit faster than that, but she raced really well for what she had to work with. Talk about her career. She made uh, East Preliminary twice, and, and she completes her career as one of the top distance runners time-wise in the history of JMU. Well, when you're talking about a young lady that when she came in as a freshman year, that it was she was almost an afterthought, someone that wasn't close to being in the top seven in cross country as a freshman. Uh, she came in with no real uh, credentials uh, from a high school level. And she's just worked extremely hard. She's a very coachable person. Uh, she's a perfectionist, which gets her into trouble at times in running because there's no room for a perfectionist in the sport. But at the same time, that has propelled her to be to get the most out of what she has, and she's done a fantastic job. She'll go down as one of our top distance runners of all time. Well, Coach, appreciate the time. We'll see you tomorrow as Olivia runs the steeplechase tomorrow night.